Okay, so as we discussed in the common base common base amplifiers when we were talking about BJT transistors, um, the circuit that I showed in the previous slide, and well, generally all the common gate circuits that I've shown to you right up to now, they have a they have a biasing issue. Imagine that, like, just consider the circuit in the previous slide. Basically, if I want to draw it based on the circuit that we see here, imagine that there is no R3 and there is no capacitor. I just have a short circuit between these two, right? So what happens is that if you want, during the time that you're doing DC analysis, you have to consider the fact that, okay, my gate voltage VG is actually set by this resistive divider R1 and R2. That's good. But then my source voltage, which is equally important as gate voltage because I always care about the relationship between VGS and VTH to make sure that my transistor is on and also I care about the relationship between VGS minus VTH and my VDS to make sure that I'm in saturation. The source voltage, the DC of the source, which is this point, is extremely important in biasing. Now, if I connect my input through a resistor to the source, what happens is that if the DC of my input changes, if it's zero or one volt or half a volt or 0.1 volt, it's gonna change my source voltage. Therefore, it's gonna change my biasing. It's gonna, and if my biasing changes, we know that the biasing really determines the GM of a transistor or not of a transistor. So pretty much everything will change. And that's not something that we want. Imagine that the input of this common gate stage is the output of a previous common source amplifier. So like basically if I want to make sure that everything is working well, I have to somehow design the two stages together in a way that the DC of the output of the common source amplifier is the exact DC that I need for the input of my common gate amplifier. And we saw a design example with the common source amplifiers. We saw that it's already complicated. It's already too, much, too many different variables that we have to consider. We don't want to actually think about yet another thing. And sometimes it's actually impossible to uh, provide the DC that is required for the next stage. So what do we do? Well, we try to, we try to, to use the same trick that uh, we had before with the common source amplifier. We use this decoupling capacitors to isolate the DC of the input from the source. Now, what is the problem with just doing this and not including R3 yet? Well, the problem is that if I just have this, imagine this circuit in the DC operation. This capacitor in DC is open circuit, so we don't see any part of this circuit. And I don't have the R3, so what will happen is that my source is actually floating. So no current, basically. There's no drain source current, so again, kind of like a bigger problem. So to avoid that problem, I would say, well, we need some other R3 connected here. So this is why we do, so all the stories that I just told you is basically the answer to why you actually design the, the, the bias, the biasing of a common gate amplifier like this. Okay. So if you don't care about the reasoning, well, you shouldn't care about what I told you up to now, because it's not going to help you solving this, uh, basically question that is asked here what's the voltage gain of this circuit okay so this is why we do the biasing this way but now let's see what will happen to the voltage gain well in terms of calculation of voltage gain again uh, this is another time that you should pause the video and try to actually do the voltage gain calculation because it is very similar to whatever we have done up to now you should be able to actually solve this without drawing the small signal model because that's always the solution but it's a long solution and it's a lengthy and time consuming solution so hopefully uh, you have tried it yourself but let's actually solve this together again we know that uh, if i know the voltage at x the source of this uh, circuit then i know that if i call this vx as it's shown here uh, the gain of this amplifier v out over vx is really gmrd you might actually think that oh well before you had the v bias here and now you have r1 and r2 but if you think about it it doesn't really matter from the ac perspective because what all r1 and r2 do is that it's a resistive divider that generates a dc voltage here right so when i'm doing the ac analysis what i will have at my gate is really a dc voltage so i can just basically connect that 
to ground. Okay, so I might as well do that. So there's no point um, in uh, thinking that this circuit is actually any different from the circuit that we have already discussed. Okay, so I know V out over Vx, which is equal to GMRD. Now, can I tell what is the relationship between Vx and Vn? Well, again, this is very similar to what I've already done before. I know that looking up, I have the source of it, MOSFET. So looking up, the resistance that I see is 1 over GM1. And looking down, well, it's actually a resistor, so I see R3. And this 1 over GM1 and R3 are actually in parallel. And uh, in the AC analysis, I know that capacitor is short. So I'm really dealing with a circuit like this. So I have Vn. I have RS, the short circuit instead of the capacitor, and I have this R3 going to ground, and I have this 1 over GM1 again going to ground. And these two are in parallel, and this is my Vx. Therefore, I can say that Vx over Vn is equal to R3 in parallel with 1 over gm1 over r3 in parallel with 1 over gm1 plus rs and i know that v out over vx is equal to gm rd i can combine these two to find v out over vn okay so this is how you actually calculate the gain with the biasing circuit there's no there's nothing new here. You can see this as an, another example, but then the main point of this slide was to actually learn how to bias the common gate stage.